hey thanks for checking out nuts and bolts with tone and welcome back to the channel today we have a mazda 2010 mazda 3 with a pretty common problem this car has a po758 code and this is a shift solenoid b all right so this is how common it is just a couple weeks ago we had another guy had this exact same color car, same year, same model, same everything, same code uh, in. And they did a bunch of testing on it. And they actually like dropped the transmission pan and all this stuff to test it. You don't need to drop the transmission pan. I'm going to show you how to test that. And what's really exciting is I'm going to show you how to use the Devo meter a little bit more. I have not been able to use it much as I don't do diags all day every day. I, I rarely do these kinds of diags because I do R and R on diesels and you know things like that. So I'm really excited to share with you my Devo testing and some other ways that I tested this vehicle. Before we get into it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. All right, so let's get into it. Shift solenoid B testing on a Mazda. Let's go. Let me show you how to test it. All right, here we go. Got this uh, 2010 Mazda 3 here with a P0758 shift solenoid B electrical malfunction. Now, this must be a pretty common problem because this is the second one that we've had uh, in just this month alone. It was even the same color car. So I'm going to show you how to test that. And what we're going to do is we're going to go right down here to the transmission control um, connector right there. And we're going to test at that connector and that's going to test through it and we're also going to test the the computer's uh input to make sure that the tcm is actually sending the signal let me get this thing set up but what we're going to be using we're going to be using the devo meter and we'll even use an ohm meter just to check and show everything but what we're going to be doing is we're going to open this up we're going to be getting the devo meter out we're gonna be using uh, the forward probes right here. We're also gonna be using the back probes and we're gonna back probe this thing and look at the computer input, make sure that there's a, that the signal is from the computer. And then we're going to load the solenoids with the Devo meter. Let me get everything set up and I'll show you. Right, the first thing we're gonna do is what I like to use is my grip D mats here uh, to set everything in so I don't lose them because I'm gonna have uh, some forward probes. I got back pressure probes. Yeah, I don't wanna lose them. So what I like to do when I'm back probing a connector is I like to get out my power probe. And the only reason I'm using the power probe is so that way I know. So when you back probe a connector, the worst thing is not knowing if you actually back probed it properly. So what I like to do is back probe it with my power probe hooked up because I know that since we've got ground, I know that I've back probed it properly and we have a signal. So the, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to be checking, we are going, so if you look down here, the, the yellow wire is uh, the shift solenoid B wire and that is the common failure on this. So we're gonna go over here to the light blue wire also. So we're gonna go to the light blue wire. The reason that we're doing that is because when you test something and you're not 100% certain what you're supposed to see, then you don't know if the result is correct. So what I like to do is test a known good and then I know if what I'm testing is bad or good. If you test two components that are exactly the same and you get the same result, then you know that the one component you're testing is not bad. So, trying to get a good bite. Okay, all right, so now I have back probed into, so now the yellow wire is solenoid B and the light blue, so the, the black wire is solenoid A and the red wire is solenoid B. So now, Let me get this set up, hang on. Okay, so what I've got is I've got uh, my negative over here to ground, 
and I've got my uh, my positive over here to the solenoid wire. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be starting this. Let me get it right. Okay, I don't have the mass airflow sensor plugged in, so it took a minute. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go over here to functional tests. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, so solenoid A is shift solenoid one. So what I'm going to do is, let me move this over here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase, trying to show you here. So now what we can do is we can see as I hit the positive, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add here. And what we're looking for is an increase in voltage. So we increased voltage, we increased voltage again, we increased voltage again. So at 40%, we're at two volts, 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90. At 100%, we are at 4.8 volts. So now, now let's test the solenoid that we have the code for. And now what we're checking right now, and the engine has to be running to do this test. So now what we're gonna do is, now we're gonna test solenoid B. This is the solenoid that has the code. Now the last one that we had, the TCM was just bad. It had 0.5 volts, and no matter how much you commanded it, it didn't change. So this one here, we're at 60%. 70, 80, 90, 100%, we got 4.8 volts. So now we have confirmed that not only is the TCM working, but it's actually sending a signal and it's sending the exact same signal for solenoid A and B. So now, what we're gonna do now is now I've confirmed that the TCM is sending a signal. So now we're gonna remove these back probe pins and disconnect the connector and we're gonna put the forward probes on. Let me get that set up. All right, so now what we're gonna do is now we're going to, we're gonna, res we're gonna ohm test this just to see what we get. So, what I'd like to do again, the same thing, is I like to hook up a power probe because these solenoids, one, one, one wire comes from the TCM, the other one goes through the solenoid and the other one is internally grounded to the case. So I know that while I hook up here, we're connected to the actual solenoid. So now we can disconnect that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is now we're gonna do a resistance test just to see what the resistance is. And then we're gonna do something different. So we're gonna go to ohms and we're gonna hook up one wire here and we're gonna go to the transmission case. Okay, and then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up to solenoid B and we're gonna check resistance and it's gonna kinda, it takes a minute, my meter kinda takes a minute, so we're about two ohms right there. And now we're gonna check solenoid A and we're gonna check the same thing. And there we are with a similar reading. So now what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna get the Devo meter out and now we're gonna test it. Now we're gonna actually load test the solenoid because all we do is check if the windings are okay. Let me get that set up and I'll show you how we're gonna test that. Okay, got the Devo meter out here. Okay, so with the Devo meter out, you're going to, and what I'm gonna show you in this video is why we don't need to retest resistance. Um, we're gonna do multiple tests with this. We're gonna do one test with this and it's gonna eliminate a lot of things. So right here, we're gonna hook up this side to battery voltage, and you got the 22 foot cables that come over here, and they go on to the leads here, and you've got your fused, uh, your fused positive lead here, and I always put that towards the battery. You want that closest to the voltage source. So what we're gonna do here while testing a transmission solenoid is we're gonna ignore the LEDs, okay? So the LEDs are only matter when you're hooked up to a circuit where there's actually voltage. So we're not looking at voltage when you're looking at a connector that's disconnected uh, because there's no voltage there. You're just looking at resistance. 
So we're gonna ignore these LEDs. So right now we can see the battery is at 12.1 volts. We've already done a test and confirmed that the TCM is sending a signal. And we've already done a resistance test saying that the wiring from the connector through the solenoid into the ground is good. But now we're gonna do it differently. So now what we're gonna do is now we're gonna actually load it and we're gonna make sure that the solenoid is okay and not just passing a resistance test. So the red wire, the red lead is going to be testing solenoid A, the solenoid that's not bad. So now what we're gonna do is since we're testing a transmission solenoid, we're gonna do it a little bit different. Like I said, we're only gonna be going to the negative side. So we're gonna plug this in and now it doesn't matter whether we're in voltage or voltage loss. So this is a voltage and voltage loss. You can see that we're looking here because remember, we're not hooked up to the positive side. There's nothing there. So what we're looking at is we're looking at 0.32 volts loss, 0.32. So now we know what a good solenoid looks like. So now let's test a solenoid that could be bad. So now, now we're on solenoid B, the one that has the code, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, hit this one. And we have the exact same reading both ways. So now what we're gonna do is, and you wonder, 0.32 volts, what does that mean to you? Well, what that means to us is that we are going to, since we're using the Devo meter, we're gonna come over to the Devo website and we're gonna go at the top here and we're gonna to go to resistance calculator. And we are going to enter the battery value and the voltage loss value, 0.32 volts. Now remember, our, our, our resistance was 2.1 ohms. So here we are at 2.05 ohms. So this right here calculates out exactly with voltage loss, what our resistance is. Now, the good thing about doing it this way is we loaded this solenoid. So we know that when this solenoid is loaded, it is okay. A resistance test is difficult because you can have 20 strands of wire in a wire. And if one strand is connected and the rest of them are broken, you will still have continuity. But if you load it, you will not pass a load test because it cannot carry the current. It wouldn't light up a light bulb if you put ground on one side and power on the other. This will tell you if it wouldn't light a light bulb. All right, so now on this one, we're gonna go ahead and check transmission fluid and uh, I will let you know where we're gonna go on this one. Okay, so to replace the TCM, what you gotta do is you gotta take out your air box here. You got the upper air box, the air filter, and the lower box. It's got 110 right here. You're gonna take out your battery tray, which has got three 10 millimeters in the bottom. You gotta take your battery out. Once you get all that, you're gonna get down here, and here's your transmission control module connector. You're gonna have a connector here for a sensor right next to it, and then you got this one uh, plastic post on this, uh, on this bolt right here. And then I think there's three bolts holding this thing in and uh, we got to take this out. So we're going to have to send this out to be rebuilt. So let me get this out. All right. So I hope that in this video, you are becoming more comfortable testing vehicles. We used a multimeter testing resistance. Uh, the only thing I did not show you in this video and the only reason I forgot to do it for the video, I did it in testing. Uh, remember, I'm a flat rate tech, so I don't just sit in a shop and make videos of testing cars. I'm actually doing this as a flat rate tech, and so I'm kind of moving along. And for this video, I actually went back and rehooked up the car to do a bunch of more testing on it uh, to show you uh, some of the things. But the one thing I did not do is I hooked up a power probe to the actual solenoid uh, pin with the, with the forward probe from the Devo meter and the lead hooked up. I hooked it up to my power probe and I powered the solenoid about 20 times. I, power, I powered solenoid A and B and I listened to it click every single time. Now that's an important thing because in testing vehicles, some like a Chevy truck, if you get a, a EVAP code, the first thing that you wanna do is actuate the vent solenoid and you're not gonna check to see if it's working because it's a Chevy truck. Vent solenoids go out all the time. You're just gonna listen. 
And if you don't hear it click every single time you actuate it, it's bad. It's common. So that's how we can use our ears to diagnose things as well. And so I did solenoid A and B. I made sure they clicked every single time with the power probe. Rest of the testing was with the multimeter and the Devo meter, which I'm so super excited to use. And one of my coworkers is actually looking to get one. So we were both over there super excited and trying every which way to use it uh, because this thing has so many uses and I haven't even figured out all of them. I'm learning as I go and I'm sharing with you. So in this vehicle, it ended up needing a TCM and uh, the TCM is actually off being rebuilt now because it's funny that there are no TCMs. There's no used TCMs. There's no junkyard TCMs. There's no remanufactured TCMs. And the dealer has upped the price on them because they know that there's a common failure with them and that, that there's a limited supply. So the prices for these TCMs has shot up. Uh, we just did one, like I said, a couple weeks ago. That one, we found a used TCM. We were able to plug it in and everything was fine. But now there's none. So I had to take it out and we just have to push this car in and out every day for like a week or two. So anyways, that doesn't matter. Thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of my future content. And also, check out my merchandise store where you can get yourself a t-shirt or a copy cup, get a water bottle, stay hydrated during the day, and support the channel. Check out my Instagram, Nuts and Bolts with Tone, for my daily life as a mechanic. Show you tools in use. Even show you this Devo meter while I'm testing it on my Instagram. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.